Good day. Welcome back to First Take on YouTube. I've got Stephen A. and Radio Hall of Famer Christopher Mad Dog Russo. Let's get into it, fellas. We head to the association as it was a heavyweight matchup. A brotherly love between the NBA's regular season MVP Joel Embiid and reigning finals MVP Nikola Jokic. Embiid came out on top, dropping 41 in a 126 to 121 win, putting together another MVP-esque performance. And speaking of most valuable player, before the game, Embiid spoke on whether he's focused on winning the award in consecutive years. Take a listen. I've already done it. Uh, I've always said it. I want it on five chance to find a chance to get a second one. And I do it, uh, but I'm not going to force myself or you know, push for it. We're winning. That's the main thing. Got to keep winning. And obviously, you know, you put in the stats uh, to get in the conversation. It's great too. Um, so, yeah, that's great. But at the end of the day, if there's something going on and I can't meet the requirement for the amount of games play uh, to qualify for that, then so be it. Okay, Mando, do you think Embiid should care about winning back-to-back -back MVPs? Absolutely. Why not? It's 65 games. He doesn't have to play 82. And I don't quite understand what? He can't figure out a way to play a game on April 15th because he wants to win an NBA championship? The NBA playoffs take forever. There's, the first round takes two and a half weeks. There's two or three days in between games. He's got a, a lot of time to relax and take it easy. We'll worry about the Celtics in the conference final when they get there. He's only play, He's going to play 62, 63 games. He's going to be close to the 65 number. What's the big deal? Play an extra couple games. Boy, that would motivate me to win a second straight MVP. Bird won three in a row. Shaq's only won one. Kareem won a million of them. Why not win as many as you can? That's what greatness is all about. I'm surprised. Go win the six. Go win it again. That's what you're here. That's what you're playing the games for. The championship and the MVP are separate. The championship, you worry about that when you get close enough to win it. The MVP, the MVP is over April 15th. What difference does it make? So play and win the MVP. Um, I don't think he should be concerned about it. I'm not saying he shouldn't play. I'm not sure that he shouldn't play well. I'm just saying that he shouldn't be atop his list of priorities. The man is averaging 35 points per game following up an MVP season. He's playing like an MVP again. He's had, what is it, 18 straight 30-point-plus games? 18 straight. And on top of it all, he's had 40 or more points in seven of his last 13 games. The dude is playing lights out. But here's the reality, doggy. Because you, the historian who ultimately holds people accountable, who brings up the word immortal every chance you get, as if you're Thor or the Hulk or somebody, you're some, you're just some Marvel aficionado, I would remind you that this dude, Joel Embiid, is 5-1 and one in opening round playoff series. He's 0-5 in Eastern Conference semifinal series. He has never been to a conference finals. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it has gotten to the point where he's graduated to a certain level. His greatness is cemented. We look at him. We know how great he is. We look at the footwork. We look at the shooting ability, the touch, the moves around the basket, his size, his girth, his defensive prowess. The dude is one of the elite big men from a talent perspective the game has ever seen. And now he has a league MVP trophy on his mantle. The one thing missing is a championship. And so for me, the priority should be that. That does not mean he misses games. It doesn't mean he's already missed 10 games this year. He misses about seven more, and then he disqualifies himself for any individual awards. I'm not encouraging him to miss games or anything like that. What I'm saying is it was clearly a concern last year. He wanted that league MVP very, very badly, to the point that when Jokic was taking heat because everybody was voting him and saying that he was the imminent MVP again, even though he already had two on his mantle, Jokic just stepped back and was like, my priority is capturing a championship, and then he went out and did it. If anything, Jokic has set the stage, and he set the standard because he went away from prioritizing the individuality to making sure that he captured the chip. And now we recognize him as a champion. As great as we look at as Embiid as being, 
The reality is, is that we look at Boston. We look at Boston as being better. We look at Giannis Antetokounmpo and Milwaukee as potentially being better because Giannis is a champion. We look at Jokic and Denver as probably being better because they're the reigning defending NBA champions, whereas Joel and B got bounced out in a game seven yet again. Not only did James Harden not show up, he didn't show up either. That is the priority. And that's what I mean when I say he shouldn't care about winning a straight, a second straight MVP. It's not that it doesn't matter, but it significantly should pale in comparison to get into the conference finals and ultimately an NBA finals and capturing the championship. Uh, I don't disagree with the, I, I, I get the idea that the t title and the winning a championship is more important, but you're playing 82 games in his case, 65. Why not be motivated by winning an MVP? What's one have to do with the other? You win the MVP and then you turn your because, attention to the championship. Because, I don't understand what the because, problem is. Well, here's what the problem is. Sometimes you can find yourself in a race for league MVP honors. And you're going out there and you're competing with other individuals to get that individual award. And as a result, you may tax yourself to some degree once the playoffs arrives. Again, you shouldn't be missing games. But in the same breath, I don't yeah. care what sport it is. You do find yourself at moments pacing yourself to make sure you don't exhaust yourself when it really counts. So, okay. They gave him a 17-game leeway. He only has to play 65 games to win the award. It's okay. not like he's got to play 82 games. That's right. pacing yourself as it is. You only got to play 65. But he, but, but, but he didn't miss the 10 games he missed, Joggy, because he was pacing himself. He missed it because he was legitimately injured. All right. In the next 40 games, he can miss six. Okay. Stephen A., is All he right. the front runner for MVP? Yeah, right is Joel and right, the front right, runner? Right now. Yes. Yes. Mad Dog? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, I'd have to, so I haven't thought about it carefully enough, but I do think he is. Yes. Okay. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, you can use um, Belichick to the Jets on your radio that show today. That was an today. excellent one. She had yeah. that. How Stephen come we didn't A., get if you want to use that, if you want to use that tomorrow on the show, Belichick, Troy, I'll take off my producer Troy, on, hat, Molly, and you guys can steal my. Molly, idea. Troy Aikman on my podcast said Tom Brady, Bill Belichick wants to accomplish two things. He wants to break Don Shula's all-time winning record. Of course. And he wants to win a Super Bowl without Brady. Okay, those Good. two things. He has no shot in hell accomplishing those two things, playing or well, coaching for the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers, hey, they have Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. They just got to get Rogers. the line fixed. They've got a good defense there. Yeah, I hush. Yeah, they, they do have, the have an elite defense. Correct. They have an elite Don't defense. Don't forget, Not I used so. to work at NFL Network, all right? She's I, on top I know of it. things. They got okay? Rodgers is going to play, Steve. Why right. wouldn't you want to go to the Jets? Finish up where you started. All right. Steve, you look great. You enjoy L.A. <laughs> Mad Thank Dog and I are going to go put our coats on and uh, light please. our fireplaces. Oh, All right, God. thanks for watching. Be sure to watch First Take Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. on ESPN. And be sure to check out more exclusive First Take debates right here on YouTube.